hey, all this is part five. <clears throat> and the definition for this, or the like, the problem statement for this is rather robust. Uh, meaning, well, it's not robust; it's just long. Uh, but that said, the documentation above this part where we went over examples um, here, it's essentially exactly this. So if you're having trouble, you might be able to parse what's going on by looking at this code here. Uh, and our function is going to model what's going on here very closely. But that said, since it's a good idea to read the problem out loud, in almost all cases, we are going to continue to do so. So we are going to complete a function that takes in three parameters, an object, recipe minimums, uh, containing required amounts for two ingredients, tomatoes and onions, in a recipe, and then two numbers representing the current stock of those ingredients, stock tomatoes and onions, um, and returns a specific string for four different cases. Your function should use an if-else-if if statement to determine the correct output. If both stock of onions and tomatoes is less than the recipe minimums, your function should return, we need more tomatoes and more onions. If the stock of tomatoes is greater than or equal to the recipe minimum, but the stock of onions is less than the recipe minimum, your function should return, we need more tomatoes, but have enough onions. If the stock of tomatoes is less than the recipe minimum, but the stock of onions is greater than or equal to the recipe minimum, your function should return, we have enough tomatoes, but need more onions. Okay, cool. Uh, finally, if the stock of both ingredients is sufficient, your function should return, we have enough tomatoes and onions, there will be excess tomatoes, extra tomato, and excess onions, extra onions, where excess tomatoes and excess onions are the number of tomatoes and onions in excess of the minimum that are in stock, e.g. see example above. Now, by that they mean up in the documentation. Below are examples of the code running, assuming that you have completed the described function. And you could also check out these because I think one of these, uh, yeah, this one, um, no? No, it's going to be this one. Uh, describes how they want you to tell us how many extra onions and tomatoes that you have. So, we're going to slog through this one. Oh boy, don't move. Copy our function stub. Paste it in. Copy our test cases. And paste those in. And we'll clear this output just to make it less confusing. Uh, so this might be one of those where we should change to not side by side, but stacked. Uh, and what that's going to do is give us a little bit easier time um, so it doesn't put things that should be on one line onto two lines. Uh, so mm, let's not wrap this one. So we'll say if, and then we'll have an else if, and then another else if, and then finally an else. So the first one is um, well, here we should say, oh, verify stock of choice. That's another one where the function statement does not have the proper number of parameters. So what we'll do is we'll just change that, and what you'll see won't represent that. So instead of choice, let's go and look at what the parameters said it should be. So we have recipe minimums, so that's one parameter. That's that, uh, you know, object that contains the minimum for the recipes. And then we have stock tomatoes and stock onions. Go on then. So we'll copy this and bring it back over to our function because we definitely need more than just choice. And that's what happens if you copy and paste too much. We'll move that out of the way. So if stock of tomatoes and stock of onions are both less than the minimum. So what I would say is that I want to know excess tomatoes already. I want to know how many extra tomatoes I have and how many onions I have. If those numbers are negative, then I could theoretically determine that I've done things correctly if the number is uh, based on you know zero, uh, positive, or negative. If excess tomatoes is negative, I know I don't have enough tomatoes. If excess onions is negative, I know I don't have enough onions. That's also going to help me with the uh, final string that I build in the event that I have both enough uh, enough of both ingredients. Now, to be sure, this is not how we did it in the documentation. In the documentation, we wrote specifically if stock tomatoes is less than the recipe minimum dot tomatoes and stock onions is less than recipe minimum dot onions. So you can absolutely do it this way. This is a valid way to do it. The only problem is going to be when you get down to here, how we actually output this, because this is hard coded. So it just says two extra tomatoes because it knows that we have two extra tomatoes. But what we need to have here is something that actually calculates how many we have uh, in excess of the amount that we need. So with that in mind, uh, no, we'll leave that as is, because this actually doesn't make this a very good example, but that's okay. 
So first thing we'll say is excess tomatoes is equal to recipe minimums dot tomatoes minus stock tomatoes. So if the recipe calls for five tomatoes and we have we are doing this exactly opposite of the way we should. So we'll say stock tomatoes minus recipe tomato recipe minimums tomatoes. So if we need five tomatoes and we have six, six minus five is going to be one, so that'd be one excess tomatoes. Uh, if we have three tomatoes and we need seven, then we would have negative four excess tomatoes. So if excess tomatoes is negative, um, yeah. I'm thinking that that might be a very bad thing that that example is not uh, set up the way that it is. So what I might do is go back and change that. Um, but then that means the video for that would look kind of weird. Well, that's okay. We'll figure that out as we go. So for this one, we're also going to need an excess onions, which will be equal to stock onions minus recipe minimums dot onions. And our assumption is, of course, that these will have an onions and a tomatoes um, key in them. So if that's the case, uh, we need to determine uh, if the stock of tomatoes and the stock of onions are both less than the minimum. So the way that's going to work is essentially if excess, and I'm going to copy and paste this, excess tomatoes is less than zero and excess onions is less than zero, then we need to return this statement right here. And I'm going to copy and paste these. Because for this one, it's otherwise if stock. And you can see why wrapping your pseudocode around the code can make things a little bit easier, but it can also be a little bit more cumbersome. So it's definitely like kind of like a dealer's choice. Whichever way ends up working for you is what you should end up doing. So if the stock of tomatoes is less than the minimum, so excess tomatoes is negative, uh, but the stock of onions is sufficient. So this would be greater than or equal to zero. In that case, we're going to say that we need more tomatoes, but we have enough onions. And then this will be identical except opposite. So this one's going to be if we have enough tomatoes, meaning that the excess tomatoes is greater than or equal to zero, but excess onions is less than zero. And the statement that we're going to return is we have enough tomatoes, but we need more onions. Okay. And the more I'm thinking about it, I'm probably going to go back and change the example so that it actually does calculate what's going on, just so that it's a usable piece of documentation. Uh, but the video may or may not mention that. In fact, I'll probably just go back and redo the video. So anyway, uh, this probably won't make sense because the video that you will have seen and the example that you will have seen will both be uh, updated. But in the earlier part of this video, when we went up to look at the documentation, that part won't be updated. So there you go. And OK, so here is our sentence that we want to return in the event that we uh, have enough of both. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to kind of um, interpolate the value of excess tomatoes in there. So plus excess tomatoes plus extra tomato. And then for this, I'm going to wrap this or just highlight it, hit the um, quotation mark, and then put a plus on both sides of it. I think that should be it. So if we run this, let's see what we did wrong. Okay, recipe minimums is not defined. Well, probably because minimums is not a word. Minimums. So this one didn't get highlighted, so that's where it's just misspelled. It also says it's online too. Um, also, that second one means the 41st character, which if you feel like counting it out, you'll find out that it's true, but that's, that's why it says 240, uh, 241 here. So let's run this and see what we did wrong now. OK. Should log we have enough tomatoes and onions. There will be two extra tomato, one extra onion. We have enough tomatoes and onions. There will be two extra tomato, one extra onion. Five, three. We need more tomatoes and more onions. We need more tomatoes but have enough onions. We, need, we have enough tomatoes but need more onions. I think I said this one wrong. But we need more tomatoes but have enough onions. OK, cool. So that's looking like all of the test cases are coming out appropriately, which means we should copy our function, which we have now completed, come back uh, to our input window, 
There you are. Paste it in there and run the tests. Excellent work. So I'll go ahead and re-update that video with the lesson, uh, with, the, with that part of the lesson that wasn't correct. And to be sure, what I'm saying by that is here, where it says there will be two extra tomato. This is hard coding a response. So if we were to change the number of tomatoes uh, and the number of onions that we had in stock, this part wouldn't change and we want it to. So when you see this, the, re the uh, docs will be updated and the video for that section will also be updated. But let's have one last quick look at the lesson that we just did. So there's our tomatoes, there's all our good stuff. And there's the full answer there again, just in case you needed to see it. And we're in good shape. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.